Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about different types of waves. Then we'll learn about transverse waves, longitudinal waves, and we'll finish with a summary. It turns out that we can mainly classify the waves as two different types. So let's see what those are. Let's imagine wiggling a spring from side to side. When we do this, we would be able to see a wave move along it. So we could wiggle the spring side to side by moving our hand, for example, side to side or up and down like this. When we do this, we know that the spring doesn't move in this direction, but a wave certainly does. So we have a wave that seems to move along in this direction. But each part of the spring is actually just going up and down like this. And this highlights something quite interesting about this wave. Each part of the spring is oscillating perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving in. So for example, this part of the spring here is moving up and down in this direction. But we know that the wave is moving away from the hand in this direction. And if we draw on this angle here, we see that we have a right angle. And so we notice that the oscillations are at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving. Not all waves act like this. And we'll see an example of a wave in a second that doesn't. So this is a special type of wave and we call it a transverse wave. So let's see an example of a wave that isn't a transverse wave. If we instead push the spring backwards and forwards, we would still see a wave move along it. And you may have seen this sort of thing done with a spring. So we push backwards and forwards with our hand. Or in other words, we push and pull on the spring. This will send a wave, a disturbance moving along it. Again, no part of the spring ever makes some grand journey from where it is to some place much further away. Matter isn't moving with the wave. But the bits of the spring do move in the direction of motion of the wave. They vibrate backwards and forwards in this direction. So what we're saying is that this time, each part of the spring oscillates in the same direction that the wave is moving in. So this here is the oscillation of the spring. And we see that the oscillation is in the same direction as the motion of the wave. So this is our other type of wave and we call this a longitudinal wave. And the way of remembering this is that a longitudinal wave vibrates along the direction of motion of the wave. So let's look at some more examples of transverse waves. In transverse waves, the vibrations or oscillations are perpendicular to the direction that the wave is traveling in. So the wave is traveling like this, but each part of the spring moves like this. So let's see some other examples of transverse waves. And we saw one in our previous video. Ripples on the surface of a pond are transverse waves. So we know how this works. We drop a pebble in the pond and this causes these ripples to spread out across the pond. If we looked side on, it would look something like this. And how do we know that this wave is transverse? Well, let's put a twig on the surface of the pond. This twig is going to oscillate up and down, which is perpendicular to the direction that the ripple moves. So basically it turns out that if we were to put a twig on the surface of the pond, that's how it seems to oscillate. And therefore we know that the oscillations here are up and down, which is of course perpendicular to this direction that the ripple is moving in. And there are many, many more examples of transverse waves. So let's think of a few more. So the vibrations in guitar strings are transverse waves. It turns out that the wave on a guitar string moves up and down the string like this. But having been plucked, this string is actually vibrating in this direction, perpendicular to the string. Some other very important examples are light waves and radio waves. So for example, a light bulb we know emits light, but it turns out that light is a transverse wave. It also turns out that radio waves are transverse waves. Both light and radio waves 
are types of electromagnetic waves. Finally, wiggling a rope does a similar thing to wiggling a spring. It sends a transverse wave along it. So again, if we move our hand up and down like this, and then we see that the pattern formed in the rope, this wave, moves along in this direction. Now let's look at some examples of longitudinal waves. Remember that in longitudinal waves, the vibrations or oscillations are in the direction that the wave is traveling in. So the wave travels in this direction and the oscillations are along that direction. And we have already come across another example of a longitudinal wave. It turns out that sound is a longitudinal wave. It moves through air. So let's imagine that we have a sound wave, which we know should be moving from a speaker towards our ear. The idea is the following. The air particles oscillate along the direction that the sound is moving. So here is one such air particle. What it does is it travels in this direction, carrying some energy with it. Eventually it bumps into some other particle. When it does that, it is then reflected and bounces back. So we see that the particles move like this and then like this. So they are oscillating to the right and then to the left. And these oscillations, these kicks forwards and backwards are in the direction that the wave is moving. Now you may have noticed in this picture that there are regions of this wave that look different to other regions. So for example, this region here looks like it has lots of air particles close together. And then in this region here, it looks like the air particles are further apart. We have special names for these regions. Areas where the particles are close together are called compressions. So an example of a compression would be this region here. And then on the other hand, the areas where the particles are spread apart are referred to as rarefactions. So for example, this part here would be a rarefaction. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together, let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.